Elixir uh, is an interesting name for a programming language. I was amused when I heard about it first, the first time from Pat, a friend and colleague of mine. Uh, yeah, I, back then I didn't think that I would give a presentation about Elixir, but here I am. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk about what motivated us to choose Elixir for one of our recent projects, what challenges we faced, and how we tackled those challenges. I will start with a short description of the problem, followed by the requirements, the challenges it brings. Next, I will talk about how far Node.js meets those requirements and where it falls short of. After that, I will discuss how Elixir fits the bill. I will conclude my presentation with a few more challenges to tackle in near future. At my company, we have several subsystems. They consume services from different third-party service providers. Good thing is, no service is consumed by more than one subsystem. That enabled different teams to move at their own speed, which had been very convenient. But recently, this has changed. Some of the services now are now consumed by more than one subsystem. So this has caused a problem with several consequences. One consequence is we fail to respect rate limit. Third-party API service providers specify the rates at which we can make requests to their services. For example, five requests per second, 10,000 requests per day. Another consequence is duplicated effort. Making API requests and uh, parsing responses is the easiest part. A significant time is spent in figuring out the failure responses even before starting implementation. Most of the time, the API specifications provide a list of error codes and one sentence description for each of them. Sometimes it's not clear enough the exact conditions for which those errors occur. Reducing a duplicated effort will save our development time. A common approach to solve this problem is to have a centralized control, an API gateway that all subsystems will use to interact with the third-party API services. We decided to go with that. So we determine the set of requirements first. Obviously, the first requirement is to respect the rate limit. There are different kinds of rate limits that fall into two categories. The first category tells us why, where the rate limit will be applied. Is it client-specific or global? Does this API have specific rate limit? The second category tells us how the rate limit will work, actually. So it includes burst rate, quota limit, concurrent request limit. Let's see some examples. 10,000 updates per day, 250,000 reads per day. These are examples of quota limit. They are also API endpoint specific limits. Next, five queries per second. This is an example of burst rate limit. Now, burst rate limit does not always add up to quota limit. The sum, some, it is possible that the sum exceeds the quota. So we have to keep an eye on both burst rate limit and quota limit. Last example, five concurrent requests max, which is an example of concurrent request limit. It says that at any time instance, we can have at most five requests in progress. The second requirement is robust error handling. We should have proactive as well as reactive error handling mechanisms in place. We also have a few very important uh, non-functional requirements. The first of them is fault tolerance. If application crashes, API Gateway should resume from where it left off. That means it should store the consumed limit, uh, the quota limit consumed so far. It should also not lose the, any unprocessed API request. Next, extensibility. We should be able to add support for new third-party services without significant change. Scalability. If burst rate limit is increased from 5 QPS to 100 QPS, we should be able to take advantage of that without much effort. 
Last, visibility for debugging. One example is we want to see if API requests are being processed or if they are stuck. Now that we have a basic idea of the requirements, it's time for design implementation. Fun time. At my company, almost all projects are Node.js based. So we started uh, with Node.js. Love it or hate it, in Node.js, for the same task, we have more than one libraries, sometimes half a dozen. So for rate limiter, I have got five libraries and compared them. Token Bucket is a popular algorithm for implementing rate limit. These libraries implement that. As we see, neither concurrent request limit nor scalability are supported by any of these libraries. I will discuss shortly why these are difficult to implement in Node.js. So two things, concurrent request limit, scalability. Is it possible to implement concurrent request limit in Node.js? Of course it is. Multiple requests and responses can be processed asynchronously. We can even do better with parallelization. Cluster module can be used for that. But it's more work. We'll have to work on accidental complexity in addition to essential complexity. Dealing with accidental complexity is not fun always. And dealing with concurrence, uh, debugging concurrency problems is hard because it works most of the time. How about scalability? For example, bar straight limit is upgraded from 5 QPS to 100 QPS. That means to take advantage of that, we will need to have more concurrent requests. For performance reason, we will need multiple machines. Now the question is, how can we coordinate rate limit among multiple machines? Things are more complicated now. At this point, I realized that it might be a good idea to look outside of Node.js. I discussed the problem uh, and findings with Pat. He told me to look at, take a look at Elixir. I spent the next uh, two weeks looking into Elixir and OTP. Turns out it is actually a good fit for our problem. For burst rate limiter, we can use Elixir gen stage, gen stage behavior. Uh, behavior in Elixir is similar to interfaces in object-oriented languages. Gen stage abstracts provider consumer mechanism. So whenever we deal with provider consumer, we'll also take care, we'll also need to take care of about back pressure. Gen stage abstracts that too. It even has a sample code, example code for a simple rate limiter. We started with the example code, modified it to our limit, uh, to our needs, and abstracted it for a burst rate limiter. Now, having a new rate limiter is as simple as calling this function. Now, concurrent request limit. We can think of API requests to third parties as jobs to do. So let's assume that we have a job queue for a given API. Job producer is producing jobs according to bar straight limit. If concurrent request is not supported, we, we have only one job consumer, which is an API requester. Now, if we have multiple concurrent request support, all we need to do is add more job consumers. It's that simple. Elixir, to make things even simpler, Elixir provides a supervisor module, which takes care of managing multiple job consumers. It, uh, supervisor is responsible for spawning the child processes and restarting them when necessary. The code of supervisor for one producer and multiple consumers looks like this. It's a simplified version. To initialize the supervisor, we need to provide two things. One is the list of children and the second is supervision strategy. In this case, our supervision strategy is one for one, meaning if the child terminates, only that process is restarted. There are three uh, more supervision strategies. The available supervision strategies are uh, uh, cover most of the ba uh, most of the basic use cases, common use cases. 
we extract the child specifications logic in a separate function so we derive the producer and consumer names as atom types and give it to a utility function get child spec which returns the child specification finally in the get children function we return the list of children that's it so with with the help of elixir we can easily implement concurrent request limit it's amazing Now, scalability. The same scenario, burst rate upgraded from 5 QPS to 100 QPS. So to take advantage of that, we need more concurrent request. That means we may need multiple machines for performance reasons. Let's assume we have three machines where we have multiple API requesters and rate limit on the first machine. In Elixir, they are, Elixir, uh, they are processes. Now, how, to, how we can coordinate rate limit among multiple machines? How can rate limiter process communicate with the API requesters on different machines? The answer is simple. It's the same way one process communicate with another if they were on the same machine, message passing. Even in a distributed environment, it doesn't matter if the process, recipient process is on the same machine or on the different machine. Elixir processes are location transparent. The recipient process will get the message. So that's our story of tackling concurrency and scalability issues with, with the help of Elixir. We are now looking at a few things to tackle in near future. First, we plan to open source our rate limiter application. Second, in order to store the API requests to make, API Gateway uh, needs a priority job queue with persistence, preferably Redis. So we looked at existing Elixir and Arlang uh, job queue libraries, and we found two, Work and XQ. Unfortunately, they are regular job queues, not uh, priority job queues. They also do not have uh, support for easy rate limiter integration support. So we plan to extend one of these two libraries. Thank you very much for your attention.